All right, so I'm at a further point in the camp. Uh, it looks like Humane Society and uh, police are out here. We're just chatting with some of the residents of Kiao Beach right now. So how do you feel about what's going on? Really depressed. It's, it's best said that, you know, um, it's kind of funny because, like, I was just reading to myself something that I wrote. You're at home, but you're not at home. You're... We, we, we wasn't, um, we, we didn't just come out here and want to be what, where we're at. You know, it, it, it's kind of due to the lack of jobs nowadays and finding out that all, all that time you were working, you paid your taxes, you paid, you paid for a lot of things that, that you pay for, you know, today. It's, it's, it's just hard that when you lose, you lose your job and you get laid off and health-wise, I, I can't really go out there and get me another job that would put us back where we were, you know. So you did have a job before you came here? I did have a job and it was one of the best jobs I ever worked. What did you do? I used to. I worked in labor for this company called Art. Well, I can't say the name, but the bosses I had, the owners, they're great people. Good people. I love working for them. But as it is, we all got laid off and. That I find that there's a lot of things you, you know, you go to and going to it, you learn. Like having a good job, it's, it's good. Believe me, it's the greatest thing to be able to take your family out to dinner and, and, and this is like every week, you know, and making sure that your family gets everything that you can possibly give them. Then you get laid off. Unemployment is kind of so backed up, it, it, it wasn't funny. Like, we didn't get an unemployment check until like six and a half weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, you know, a week and a half more and I'm two months behind of everything. And, and trying to save the house, we went to the resources of that too. And it's crazy, I mean, to go to all these Charity, charity places like um, Catholic charities, you go to these, these other churches, and, but first you try out the one that the state has for you, the the, the system has for you, and, and it it's it's what do you call that place you went, darling? Huh? That four four two. What do you call that? That place. Well, anyway. They're supposed to help you with things like that. Mm -hmm. Except, the only problem was, I made too much money when I was working. That's crazy. Wait, they so go I'll off for your bread. gross. Okay. So you're, you're, you're... Not what you bring home. I mean, what I brought home was fair enough to take care of my family, thanks to my bosses. And I love them, I love them planning. Oh, so they went people. off your gross income and not your net income. Yeah, they go off by gross, which tells these funded, government funded um, resources that I went to that I, I can't be helped because I made too much money. We couldn't get no welfare, we couldn't get no 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 one to, to help us pay our back rent. My my landlord was getting really nuts because all of a sudden I, I I'm 
behind on my rent, and I'm not like that. Yeah, For the whole time I was working, I paid my landlord on time. And when I told her I was paying her, I'd be there and pay her. I never go back on my rope, my, my word, but this time I, I couldn't help it. I, all I could do was tell her I, I didn't get my check yet. I didn't get my check yet. And I'm waiting on my, my own that was the But I, I, I talked to her and told her about it, you know, what to expect. Yeah. And she was all right in the beginning, but after a while, being on unemployment wasn't fun. Okay. When so, you find out that you can't get help, not even from welfare. Why is that? What? Why is that? I mean, it's not just for me, it's for all the people like me. That's really not right because when I was working, I paid my taxes. I paid, I even paid off my child support. And I was proud of that. I was doing what people would say the right thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it got me. It got me. We lost the house. We couldn't pay my, my landlord. We couldn't even catch up with what, what we owed her. She's a sweet lady too. And the biggest thing is, man, why get a good job if you fall, they're not going to pick you up. They won't help you because you made so much money. Sorry, buddy, but you can't get no welfare help. You can't get no 442, what they, whatever they call that right. program. But I had to go to, I went to some, a lot of resources that I've been, you know. So that you wouldn't, so that you know. wouldn't have to be here. Right. So how not just not be here, but. You lose your home, man. I'm the head of the house. I work, and to lose a home is not great. You know, it, it, it kills your morale. It, it, it just. But you keep on struggling because you got your family to take care of. So yeah. keep your head above water, even though it's under. You keep your head above water and you keep on going. All I can say, man, is that home isn't what it's supposed to be yeah. no more. How long have you guys been here? About a year. About a year. We were struggling so bad. I pay for our food, our gas, I, I pay for everything off of my unemployment check. And by the time I get that done, which is like real quick, you know, you buy food and food is real expensive here. Should it be if you're buying food that's made here, you know, but we do. And Living out here is kind of strange because it's not like living in a house. You see, in a house, you get all your bills are like once a month. Out here, you pay for that every day. Yeah. Every damn day, man. I, I don't see how anybody can make it like that or even get out of the damn barrel where they're at. and start doing something to help themselves. Well, I'm doing it, but I'm doing it the best way I can. And right now, it's looking worse. We just got our home taken away. Again? Yeah. I, I was really, my, my parents used to be me here, my grandparents used to be me here when I was a kid. Yeah. There's this pond that comes out here once, once a year. Beautiful, it's beautiful as pond you can see because you can fit everyone. Inside the pond? Yeah. Cool. Everyone. There's room enough for a lot of children out here. And all my kids, I, I raised them here too. You know, my little girl, she's four years old, she lives with us. And it's her turn to find out where we come from, you know? 
because my little one, Toyo, her brothers and sisters Best. on my side, um, from my, my, you know, divorce, <coughs> her oldest brother is 31, going to be 32. Her sister is 30. Her, her brother below, uh, you know, above her is going to be 30. So this one is growing up by herself, so, you know. But she loves it here. She has her own story to tell about why Tom is strong. How does um, living here... Um How does living here um, change your perspective on the way you look at life? Very different. I write that down on, on paper so I can tell myself it really happened. You know, whatever is documented, it happened. And it is what it is. But then, like I said, this first time I ever felt what it feels like to be at home, but you're not at home. Because you got to move, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got these people, when you move, I mean, right now we ain't got no place to move to. I probably could go to my families, but... Mm -hmm. But notice that you get before, um, when you realized that you had to leave the, 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 the uh, Cal Beach Park. I never been in Cal Beach Park. Oh, no. Oh, Cal. This right yeah. here, this is my comos. My mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so what notice great. did you have for, in order uh, for you to leave? When, when did they let you know that you had to leave, allowed to leave the beach? Let's see. They delivered six papers. That would be like six of big. How many? Five. How many times they came from the first time? Oh. They tell you guys you got to move. Six. The month of March, every week. Every week. Yeah. Every week from the month of March. March. From the beginning of March. Okay. And today is the 17th. Yeah. So from the okay. beginning of March all the way till now. Mm -hmm. So they gave you guys. They said they they came out with these um okay. you know so state the people the saying that we could go to these, um, shelters and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. And but you have dogs, yeah? What? You have animals. Yeah, we have we had animals. I had two pigs and we had like a total of four dogs and only one survived. Does, does it look like this? Yeah. yeah. It looks like this. It's exactly. This is the one they sent down, out. When it came down to the last week mm -hmm. of maybe a few weeks before today, then they gave us a, a, what is that, numbers of agencies and yeah. Oh, cool. So yeah. they gave you guys yeah, It resources. was very well, they did, thoughtful of them when you know, it was the last week of when we got to go. We so, are still did you try to utilize those resources <laughs> and what happened? Yeah, and then what happened? Um, Again, it's like right before we lost our home. Mm -hmm. No, like now, honey. Right now, utilizing, they, the, utilizing that yeah. is good. But how can you utilize it if it's full? Right. They're full. They, they, won't, so, they won't take us. Too many people. Right. So many people are at the... At, at so, they, so they came out and handed you resources, and when yeah. you tried to contact them, you found out that there was nowhere else for you to go? Yeah, it's like... Yeah, there was it's like there. Lady of the House. You it's know? like oh. being set up, you know. For, uh, uh, how did that make you feel? Did you, did you feel hopeful when you got that paperwork, and then how did it make you feel afterwards? Before, when, it was, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. Right. We go over there. And then when you realize that... when we found out we were running into walls because they were full and, and it was like, it was like talking to the same person in all, all, all these different organi organizations, you know, like, I'm sorry sir, but we're full. Um, maybe you could try, you know, I know they would, they themselves would offer their, you know, there are other resources that they have, which is the same place that we got. 
which is dairy food too. Wow. Were you aware of the Kanavai Malahoi before today, or before yesterday when we talked? Just that day, yesterday. Mm. Do you understand what it means now? Mm-hmm. I not only understand it, I grew up knowing about it. Yeah. My grandfather told me that when he used to take me out there in the ocean at night in a small little boat and we used to come home with choke fish to paddle. We used to go out there in hand line and my papa would tell me a lot of things, yeah. you know. So what are you going to do now? Do you guys have any plans? Yeah, we, we do. First off, we need to make, we, yeah, we need to make, we need to make some uh, money. So what, is, what we're going to do is, we're going to sell all, everything. Uh, <laughs> all, the, all the metal positives. <coughs> so this is this is what they're talking about. Have, this is everything they own. And under those canvases, there's there's a lot of expensive things for for homeless people. Like and that. so you guys um, were using that stuff to live off of those yes. clothes and stuff. Yes. So you're not even going to sell it to. Want to sell it to, to whoever? Big, like time like this. Right down to the big tanks. Get some money and um. Start new. Start a, start, start again. What is it, what are your plans for tomorrow? Plans. Yeah. For tomorrow? Whatever it takes wherever it takes me today. That's what it's gonna be for tomorrow. Are you gonna it depends on how the the day ends. Yeah. I can't fight these guys. So what do you say to people who, who argue the fact that the reason why people are getting kicked out of this beach is because it it there there's so much litter? They claim that you guys didn't, didn't malama your opala, you know, you didn't take, take care of your place, you didn't take care of... You know what? That could be right. Because when we moved there, it this was place already was already full. And we tried Just I that mean, that boat, tried the, the whole thing. Tried, there but, if, boat but, but, but there was a full boat trash. there. That boat was yeah. just piled with rubbish for, from years back to years. I don't know how long. So this well, place was, was trash so before you even made it here. That, you know, when we moved here, the people that was here already that that invited us to stay here and, and yeah. help keep keep each other uh, secure. You know, um, you watch my back, I watch mine, which is a damaged thing. Man. It, it worked out real great. But the the garbage that was there, we tried to um, reduce it and and tried to get rid of it, but. Like I said, we were having hard times already, you know. We didn't get welfare um, help until later, thanks to this, uh, another uh, resources was with outreach people. Uh, comprehensive people. You know, it was, it was to them, we, we ended up getting I'm a diabetic. I can't eat what I used to eat before. It's just not good for my health. My health isn't doing that well anyway. So but I can say this, that um, wherever tomorrow will be, I just pray and hope that today and it's bright. Just keep the feet and get up and move on. Hopefully someday somebody will fight this and just end it, end it off for anyone. We don't have to do this thing we, we're doing. I mean, put us in a house. Stop the, 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 the Section 8 thing, um, the wait list. It's so damn long. It's not funny. It's like waiting for um, Hawaiian homes. I'm never going to get Hawaiian homes. I mean, by the time I get it, I'd probably be be almost ready to kick the bucket, you know. 
So did did what? any did What's anyone wrong with this guy? This guy just messed up our place like like we're, we what, like we live like pigs. Brother, and my family, brother, he's just we. Too. All right, all right. Okay, I'm I have cool. a question. Um, did anyone come here to? Uh, did anyone? Did has anybody that you guys know of come here to talk to you guys about um, what your next step is going to be, how you guys got here, who you guys are? Has anyone else besides us? Besides you guys? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. But you've noticed. But if they did, I'll be telling them the same thing I'm telling you. But. Yeah, because you know, these people that's doing this right now, it's not about knowing us, who we are, and all that. It's not. It's about something else. Yeah. I think everyone in Hawaii who does know that mm -hmm. should voice their opinion on it. Yeah. And for those who thinks otherwise, I'm sorry, but that's the way I see it. We're not wrong. A lot of things we do today isn't right either, but we do it in the right way. Robert! <laughs> Robert. I know. What do you see the future for your, for your kids, for, for your I, little one? I, what I see right now, Now she's going to have to go to Hawaiiana classes to learn. Like Lokahi or Kumara? What she could learn right the here. The charter schools. Oh, no. To get the traveling school. You're yeah, one she's set. in that traveling school right now. I, I, want, I want her to have everything that we couldn't. Mm -hmm. That's what my parents did for me yeah. and my siblings. Mm -hmm. They gave us the best they could. No, 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 no. But it's something that they can help us with, and there are some things that they can. Mm -hmm. In this case, we have to do this on our own, I mean. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that you guys can fight it? If we had the resources, I'd be right there on their front steps. Brother, I believe that your resource is here and here. I believe that a lot, very much. And I have a lot of, like, belief and support in you guys. We're not all bad people. We just have there, I don't think bad situations that's yeah. been going on in our, you know, mm -hmm. in our time right now. Mm -hmm. it's a lot of things are just always going in a spiral. Has living on the beach helped you like, appreciate a little bit more about where, who you are and where you come from a little bit? Being here, living on the land. Yes, it has. It always helps. Every time I come here, I learn more and more about what it means to be Hawaiian. And what it feels to know everything you need to know. Especially when they don't allow your family to teach you how to speak your own language. I can't speak my own language. I, I'm pretty sure my dad can, but I haven't heard him speak it. And I was told that we, you're weren't, Hawaiian, yeah. we weren't allowed to speak Hawaiian. Yeah. It sucks, it's cool you know, because you have these other cultures. You have Samoans, Filipinos, Japanese, mm -hmm. you know, um, people people from Tahiti that speak hey. French and, and, and whatnot. Hey, what do you speak? I speak English. Mm -hmm. Is that all you speak? That's all I speak. I speak. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? I'm 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 Hawaiian. Not full blooded. I'm full blooded in heart and I can't even speak my own language. It's sad. I remember working one time with my dad. We went to this house and we were doing this job. And the one of the owners came out and he started, he looked at me and he started talking to me in Hawaiian. 
And my dad was there, so I have to tell my dad that. I think, I think, Uncle, I think I can speak Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. And so he, 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 he went from me to speaking to my dad in Hawaiian. And my dad said a few words back, but. Uh, our culture has just been robbed, ripped, in every s stitch of the way, if you, you want to put it that way, you know. It, it's being robbed right now. Mm -hmm. Is there anything yeah. that you want people to know? Yeah. Not all of us are like what we think, see, and hear from others. And if we are bad people, then we, sh we shouldn't even be here, period. But we're not. We have not hurt anyone. We have not went against anything. We are struggling to keep our asses above water. Can you state your name? Andrew. Andrew? Okay. Is there My anything... My name is Kaawa. Is there anything that you guys would like to add? Okay. So... You know, when I say we're being robbed, it's not just what what's happening today. So, this it's is with the, the, it's with <coughs> okay. whatever it comes with, man. You got people that are moving things and, and, and they can't be at their camps and whatnot. So when they go, other people come in and just do and, and just, wow. One more question. Sorry. Why yeah. do you think they're cleaning up the beaches? Why do you think they're telling you guys to move? I'm not fully sure. Not sure. Do you have any but idea? I can say that a lot of times they'll either turn this into a park. You you mind if I if turn I turn around and build things on it? Yeah. You mind if I share some information? So yesterday. Uh, we were walking around and doing the same thing, asking if people wanted interviews. And while my brother was talking to some of the residents here, I happened to look across the road. And across the road is a cell phone tower. But it's not just a normal cell phone tower. They're made by a company out in California that specializes in hiding them. Mm. Okay? So they made it look like a tree so you wouldn't know what it is. All right? <laughs> these are very, very, very expensive. It has a lot of costs under these cell phone towers. Right. Yes, the does. only reason the why the company I worked for, excuse me, mm -hmm. the company I worked for before this, we installed the cable uh, that hooks up to them. Yeah. yeah. The it's only reason why. You, cable. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? For high speed data. The good things about that tower is our phone could catch down here when it. You right. could never get a cell phone to work down here at all, bro. That's good. But, but down do here, you, we, do got, you, we got, we can call people. If something happens or something happens at home or here, mm -hmm. we can call people because because of that tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that company I work for, we, we know what that's about. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what it's like that, too. Yeah, they don't. They don't spend that kind of money to hide a cell phone tower unless they plan on developing the beach. So, develop, the development plan for this area is really, really big. It's really, really big. Well, I hope it's got to do a lot with um, Homestead, Hawaiian Homestead. Yeah. Because... If you fight for it, it can be. Well, it's supposed to be because for that tower to be there, it would have to go to Hawaiian homes. I know this for mm -hmm. a fact. They know how to weasel their way through. They're already through Hawaiian homes, brother. 
A lot of the guys, they, they get scared, and they, and they kind of, they don't, they don't, it's not like they're, they're corrupt, they just, they get, <clears throat> I don't know, I, I guess the best way to put it is, no, is that really small? What is the word I'm looking for? They don't get corrupt, they just, they fall, they fall in, they get sucked in, they get, they sell out, because they're, they're scared of the people. No, they're very powerful people, too. I know. And they very powerful very people. Very greedy at times. Yeah. Oh, they're just pretty greedy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But um, is there anything else that you would uh, like to say? I want to thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. So this is the uh, far end of K.O. Beach. And we're just speaking with someone. This is Waikomo. This is uh, Waikomo. So, and this is the aftermath of a city who's gone crazy and evicting people's belongings sitting on the side of the road like it's nothing. We're going to go back down a little bit further into the beach and uh, try and get some more.